Northrop uh, White Sands in New Mexico. We have a chance of rain showers there, and that site is being ruled out as a contingency landing site at this point. Overseas at the uh, oceanic, transoceanic abort landing sites, the weather is also looking to be acceptable. Both the Maroon site in Spain and Ben Gurir Airport in Morocco are showing uh, good weather systems. However, we only need one good TAL site to launch, and uh, there has not been a selection of the prime site at this point yet, but chances are it will either be Maroon Air Base in Spain or the Ben Gurir Airport in Morocco. No significant issues being worked at this time in the firing room that would impact liftoff at 10.53. We have good weather. The astronauts are in the process of beginning their suit-up operations. And following that, are scheduled to go out to the launch pad at about 7.38 this morning. In the operations and checkout building, the STS-58 flight crew are donning their flight suits in preparation for this morning's launch. Our commander is Colonel John Blaha, giving, uh, giving us a thumbs up and signaling that he's ready for flight today. Payload specialist is Dr. Marty Fetman. This will be the first trip in space for Dr. Fetman, who also has the distinction of becoming the first veterinarian to make a shuttle flight. Here's mission specialist Dr. David Wolf, wishing everyone a good morning and gearing up for his first flight in space. Mission specialist number two is Bill MacArthur. Bill is a lieutenant colonel in the Army and has served as a CAPCOM or capsule communicator in the Johnson Space Center among his duties since becoming an astronaut in 1990. This will be the first trip in space for Lieutenant Colonel MacArthur. And here's our payload commander and mission specialist number one. Dr. Ray Sedden, giving us the AOK -okay sign and a thumbs up. This will be the third trip in space for Dr. Sedden, who also, aside from her astronaut duties, serves as an emergency room physician in Houston hospitals. Columbia's commander is pilot, Rick, or Columbia's pilot is Rick Searfoss, and this will be the first trip in space for Rick. Our mission specialist number four is Dr. Shannon Lucid, obviously very relaxed this morning. This will be the 15th flight in space for Columbia, which was the very first space shuttle, originally launched on April 12, 1981. And we have a live video shot of our seven STS-58 crew members. as they leave their crew quarters en route for the elevator. Our Director of Flight Crew Operations, David Liesma, and our T-38 and Shuttle Training Aircraft weather pilot, Jim Weatherby, accompanying the crew members. The crew being led out by Commander John Blaha and Dr. Ray Seddon, our payload commander. OTC, OVCC, our last crew members boarding at this time. Copy. Mission specialist number four, Dr. Shannon Lucid, now entering the vehicle and becoming the seventh and final crew member aboard Columbia. T minus eight minutes and counting. OTC, 
ATC PLT, essential bus source fuel cell switch is complete. Copy. T minus seven minutes, 30 seconds, and the ground launch sequencer has initiated retraction of the orbiter crew access arm away from Columbia. This bridge between the orbiter and the launch tower can be reinstalled back in place within 15 seconds, if need be. T minus seven minutes, 10 seconds, and counting. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one. Mark. QS is go for orbiter APU start. Copy. PLT OTC perform APU start. APU starts and work. Orbiter test conductor Brian Momborn has given our pilot Rick Searfoss the command to start Columbia's auxiliary power unit. Once the pilot completes this task, hydrazine will begin flowing into the holding tanks of the orbiter's auxiliary power units. 31, 37 seconds before launch, the ground launch sequencer will make a final check to assure that the vent hood is positioned well away from the space shuttle. Verify no one expects there. Caution warning, memory clears and work. Orbiter test conductor Brian Momborn requested pilot Rick Searfoss to clear the ship's caution and warning memory system. OTC PLT caution and warning memory clear complete. No unexpected errors. Retraction of the external tank's gaseous oxygen vent hood is now in work. Close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. This time we're going to send you. Roger that. Close and visors, pseudo 2 on. Orbiter test conductor Brian Monborn instructing the flight crew to close and lock their visors. T minus one minute, 50 seconds, and counting. All systems remain go at T minus 15 seconds. 10, TLS go for main engine start. Set, T minus 6, 5, 4, we have main engine start. 3, 2, 1, booster ignition and liftoff of Columbia on a life sciences mission for Earth and space. Houston's now controlling. Houston, Columbia, roll program. Roger, roll, Columbia. Mission Control sees a good roll maneuver, placing Columbia on the proper heading. Three good engines at 100%. Engines are throttling back now, easing Columbia through the dense lower altitudes, but continuing to accelerate very rapidly. Columbia is already traveling over 650 miles per hour. Columbia continues to climb at a relatively steep angle at this point, tripling its rate of speed over the next minute. Solid rocket boosters, each delivering 3.3 million pounds of thrust, will burn out and separate at 2 minutes 3 seconds. Time now, 1 minute 48 seconds. SRB chamber pressure is tailing off. And Mission Control sees a good booster separation. Columbia is now flying free, powered by its own main engines. Second stage guidance is now in effect. Altitude 184,000 feet, downrange distance 35 nautical miles. Columbia Houston, performance nominal. Roger, Kurt, performance nominal. Copy 103, convert. Press to Miko. Press. Columbia Houston, press to Miko. Press to Miko. Single engine Ben Greer 104. Columbia Houston, single engine Ben Greer 104. Booster, any changes for the dump? 
Negative flight. We'll go for the dump. Miko plus two. Copy. Joining uh, David Wolf in the Space Lab module is payload commander for the STS-58 mission, Ray Seddon. She's primarily been the uh, crew member in charge of activating all of the systems in the module uh, in preparation for the crew uh, to move into this area and begin science activities. I have 
it there, but you're right, I gotta duck there. Copy that, Ray. We'll help you if we can.
Also uh, in the foreground, Mission Specialist Dave Wolf is uh, completing his runs in the uh, rotating chair, the second subject of the day for that experiment. First uh, several runs are done uh, where the chair is spun for about a minute, and uh, then it stopped suddenly, and uh, Wolf stays uh, sitting up straight, uh, then runs are done with the chair spinning, and then stops suddenly, and then uh, Wolf will lean forward again to uh, test a reflex known as the vestibulo-ocular reflex, which is a series of rapid eye movements that uh, allow us to uh, see objects as we're in rapid motion, objects that are in uh, rapid motion past us. It's uh, one in the series of tests that study uh, the sense of orientation and how it adapts to weightlessness. This is KC5CKM calling the K5PXP from the Space Shuttle Columbia. Over. That's... C2's got someone just blabbering. C2 does. Is that it? Yeah. And we're starting to pick you up uh, on the Space Shuttle Columbia uh, K5 PXP. How are you doing today? Oh, oh. It's good for kids. Yeah. Okay, and I'm copying you about four by now. Over. Okay, I caught the first part that says, how does it feel? But you were cut out on the last. Say again. Well, I tell you what, it just feels great. Over. Uh, 
none of us on this crew had any real problems uh, in the initial adaptation to weightlessness, and now our third day out, we're just having a ball up here. It's wonderful, like floating free. Over. Okay, what I copied was uh, the type of work that we'll be doing to uh, find out information and uh, research for a space station in the future. This Space Lab flight is a two-week mission, and we're doing life sciences research, and the bulk of the research that will be done on a space station will be uh, intended to be long-duration life sciences research. So we're part of a continuum of that research to understand how humans adapt to space with a lot of applications for uh, Earth type diseases and problems that are happening uh, on the ground. Over. This is Mission Control on our live television from Columbia's flight deck. Shuttle Commander John Blaha is talking on the shuttle amateur radio experiment with a school in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, San Antonio is Blaha's hometown and uh, this uh, school uh, setup was uh, arranged pre-flight for him to talk to students there. I'm ready. You're slightly broken. Go ahead with your questions. Get a beat on it, Ray? No. Well, Steve, uh, if you'd uh, relay to Isaiah, my heart rate has gotten slightly higher, uh, although it didn't change uh, significantly. Oh, okay. I found it's when tight. I exercise up here, though, it is harder to get my heart rate Fox up five, uh, as high as I can on the ground because I'm doing so much less work. Over. these 
lockers, clothes, washcloth, towels, film, etc., everything you need to live. We receive our messages through this machine, a thermal imaging printing system, and Bill puts it all out in the morning. We store our launch and entry spacesuits behind this net. We stow the lower body negative pressure system here while not in use. Okay, here we are, Marty. Oh, Watch it. What's this coming up? This is Korea. We're doing a mapping pass right, in Korea. Yeah. I think this is Incheon we're coming over. So we'll move the camera running? up. Are you out of film? Turn it there. Battery dead? Check the battery. Batteries no. dead. Marty, keep open the Turn manually. Oh, sorry. Turn manually. South Korea, we're over. Rick, we're coming inside to the camcorder. Okay, let me get one more shot with a wide field of view uh, viz of the entire uh, area from Baja, California, up to the Salt Sea, then into Los Angeles, looking across the desert and all the way up the coast, and I'll be right with you. John's up here exercising, so it's a busy flight deck. Copy that. Uh, no, ma'am, we haven't yet performed the dissections. Those are scheduled for flight day 13. We focused mainly on the hematology activities, which uh, put human studies to look at the anemia of space. Uh, early data in SLS-1 showed that a release of red blood cells from the bone marrow was not occurring normally. Uh, so we're now looking at red blood cell incorporation of iron and release from the bone marrow into the blood also doing animal studies that, that do those same analyses and we'll understand the red blood cell kinetics and iron incorporation uh, to a much greater extent. Uh, Marty has something to add here. Yeah, this is one of the important things.
know, sometimes you hear uh, people talk about, you know, the spiritual or, uh, effect it has on you uh, or uh, personal feelings about uh, how it affects your life later when you come back from being in space. I'm wondering why I get to talk to someone out there. How do you feel right now about that? Do you think it will affect you long term or no? This is Mission Control Houston. We're about to lose contact with the shuttle Columbia through the tracking and data relay satellite system. We'll be losing this live downlink picture from the payload bay cameras. Columbia now passing over the southern portion of the Caspian Sea on this 12th orbit of the Earth at an altitude of 156 nautical miles. All systems aboard the shuttle continue to work well as the crew is in its sleep shift, scheduled to awaken about two and a half hours from now. This is Mission Control Houston. Columbia is just crossing the west coast of the United States, up just north of uh, San Francisco in the Oakland area. Columbia moving across uh, Death Valley. This is the 68th orbit of Columbia's STS-58 mission. Lake Mead uh, just coming into view, which is the border of uh, Nevada and uh, Utah, as well as Arizona. And the Grand Canyon just moving out, out of the picture up to the upper left. This pass of uh, Columbia across the United States should take the orbiter, orbiter over uh, uh, most of Arizona, New Mexico, and uh, a large portion of Texas before moving out across the Gulf of Mexico. And Columbia just passing high above Lubbock, Texas, uh, the gray area in this left center portion of the screen. Columbia is uh, making a swing across Texas from the northwest to southeast. And the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, area just coming into view from the lower right-hand portion of the screen. And Lake Livingston, which is in the northwest uh, portions of Houston, up near Huntsville. This is Spaceline Mission Operations Control. Columbia is now uh, coming up on the southern coast of Australia. Uh, the island over towards the right-hand portion of this particular downlink view is Kangaroo Island. Um, this is the area near Adelaide, Australia. Uh, the uh, large cluster of lights that is uh, towards, uh, well, moving into the center of the screen right at this moment is the city of Adelaide.
little seat down so I can show all the bags over there. Sure. So, uh, Eight at one twenty. Seven at one hundred. Five at nine. Six at eight. Six at seven. Seven at one. No. Ship's coming. Ship's coming. Okay. At fifty-eight knots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I know why. Yeah. For the night you get it. Yeah. Twenty knots. Ten knots. There goes the FTA. Houston, we'll Columbia, as we'll stop. Good work, Rick, Bill, everybody. Columbia, Houston, uh, we see you go for the PTIs. The PTI is a program test input. This will be a firing of about 10 seconds uh, in duration of two reaction control systems jets on either side of the nose of the orbiter. Range from the landing site is now 68 nautical miles. Columbia's speed is 1,900 miles per hour. switching to a long-range uh, camera from the Dryden Flight Research Facility. Columbia's altitude is 40,000 feet. Uh, the twin sonic booms of the orbiter announcing the arrival in the landing area. Commander John Blaha is now flying the vehicle, having taken over for the software. He begins the uh, wide left overhead turn to set up on uh, final, final approach, approach to runway 22. Time to touch down, one minute, 45 seconds. Columbia Houston, we show you on glide slope, on center line, surface winds are 350 at one to two knots. Columbia's altitude is about 6,000 feet. Commander will uh, shortly raise the nose of the orbiter to slow the descent. And the uh, pilot will lower the landing gear at about 400 feet. The landing gear is now down. Main gear touchdown.
and nose gear touchdown. Columbia is rolling out on runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base, traveling 5,840,000 miles and completing 14 days in space, which makes the STS-58 mission the longest flight in the shuttle program. Columbia's will stop. Columbia Houston, we copy will stops, and congratulations on a very successful life sciences mission, and also for being the uh, fourth longest mission in our space program history. Roger that, Kurt, and from the entire crew, uh, we sure appreciate all the help we got on this mission from everybody on the ground. John, we copy, and uh, we're proud to be a part of it. We have no post-landing deltas at this time, and you're go to proceed. Roger. Convoy Commander, this is Columbia. Read you loud and clear. Columbia, Houston, good morning. We know you're out there somewhere. Good morning, Greg. How you doing? Got you loud and clear. It's Charlie in Orbit 3 is here with you. Oh, oh pretty, pretty Charlie. You're good, good this morning, Greg. Thanks for the music, buddy. We're hoping you're having a good day. As I'm sure you can appreciate, uh, this lab is an awful lot of fun. Roger that. Well, good morning, Houston. It must be uh, Halloween down there on Friday morning. Columbia, Houston. Good morning, John. Trick or treat. Same to you, John. Happy uh, Halloween. Columbia for John. Uh, we are forecasting that the temperature will be in the mid-40s at your landing time at Edwards. Okay, well, that's useful information. Thank you. And do you have any kind of forecast on the, on the weather at all and the surface winds at that time? John, we're going to tip you up that message uh, shortly so that you have the complete information. Okay, thanks. On glide slope and center line. Copy glide slope and center line. Columbia Houston, we show you on glide slope on center line. Surface winds are three five zero at one to two knots. Okay, stand by all operators for post landing delta. Okay, post landing deltas max. No deltas flight. Pop. No Delta flight. None. Columbia Houston, we copy Will Stops, and congratulations on a very successful life sciences mission, and also for being the uh, fourth longest Delta. mission in our space program history. Inco. No Delta flight. Roger that, Kurt. Booster. And from the no Delta flight. Crew, Payloads. We sure appreciate no Delta. all the help. FAO. We got no all this mission from everybody DPS, on the ground. post landing deltas. None flight. No post-landing deltas. Proceed with nominal operations. Captain. John, we copy, and uh, we're proud to be a part of it. We have no post-landing deltas at this time, and you're go to proceed. Intel, let me know when you've commanded the uppers. Roger. Convoy commander, this is Columbia.
Huntsville Space Lab. We're with you. We're ready to begin another day of research. We're all set up uh, to do the animals in the aft of the laboratory and uh, waiting for your words to begin. Huntsville Space Lab, uh, good morning. Uh, look forward to another good day. Space Lab uh, Huntsville, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, we're done with the echoes on Rick. I tried to tilt frame several times and my arm was getting tired, but I think that last one looked good. And so uh, he's heading back up to the front. Uh, yeah, the ground liked the echo that you did on Rick. They're really very pleased with it, and uh, thank both of you for that extra effort. Thank you, and we'll pass that on to Rick. Good morning, Ray. This is uh, APS from SLS-1. How are you today? Oh, that's a nice, familiar voice. Marty and I are standing here smiling at each other. Hi, Bob. All right. How's, how's things going for both of you? Just fantastic, Bob. This is like the greatest thing I've ever done. We are having a fun time and getting a hell of a lot of work done. I hope you're having fun watching us. A absolutely. I surely am, and I'm delighted to be back down here for a few days at the POC, and, and glad I had a chance to talk to you this morning. Good to hear from you, Bob, and uh, thanks for helping me get up here. You're most welcome, and uh, beha behave yourselves on uh, Halloween. <laughs> 